We went to a quote in our last presentation. In early writings 260.1 We didn't read the whole quote. But part of that quote relates to a question that was handed in. The questioner has asked What do we mean when we say a waymark is a close of probation or a shut door? We know that when we come to Daniel 12, 1 that this waymark has certain characteristics. Some of those characteristics we observe but one of them we do not take down into a fractal. There are certain characteristics of this waymark. One of them says that Michael stands up leaves the most holy place and ceases intercession. For a long time in this movement, many people thought that when we marked a close of probation for the priests, if, if we did that, we were marking no intercession. So if you told the lie today, you told the lie today. Uh, then tomorrow you ask for forgiveness. You've lost your salvation. That's how many people were thinking. Including people in Arkansas. So the question that we began to ask early last year. When we come to the second advent. You'd find that beginning to be described in Daniel 12, 2. 1 and 2. End of verse 1. Thy people shall be delivered. Verse 2. There's a cemetery out there. Dead people are buried. They're going to come out of the earth. So we see no intercession. And we see, we see resurrection. And much of what we have said with the midnight cry message is that we have truth and rules but we are inconsistent with them. My problem with what people were teaching regarding the close of probation was that they are so inconsistent with their methodology. People would say, There's no resurrection here, that would be silly. 
We don't believe that people are going to rise out of the ground at Panium. But resurrection is only one characteristic of that way, Mark. It has other characteristics. It's deliverance. It's the final completion of training. There are multiple characteristics. We wouldn't take all of the characteristics of the Second Advent to 2021. And what Elder Jeff and his followers are doing is incredibly inconsistent. They take what they want and leave the rest. With no proper rules to guide that process. So they will say, 1989 is an external event. Uh, 2001 is an external event. No external event in 2014. An external event in 2016, but they don't know what it means. No external event in 2018 that they can explain. No external event in 2019. Only internal. They'll say that in four months from now is Panium. The external battle of Panium. But they say there is no external battle of Raphia. So there is going to be an external battle of Panium. And unless something majorly happens to Russia in the next four months, there's no raffia. How can you have panium without a raffia? Then they'll take 2021 to be Daniel 12, 2. Say there's no literal resurrection. But then go to 2019. And for you, Jesus has left the most holy place. There are no consistent rules guiding what they do. Their message is a mess. But people follow it. Because if they don't, they have to hear me talk about equality. And they prefer the mess. So for some of our waymarks, there's external events. For some, there's none. Raphia didn't happen, but Panium will. Not a literal second advent, but a literal leaving of the most holy place. And what we teach is consistent. There are for this template reform line. It is the original. Jesus is not going to leave the most holy place four times. 
Aye really ye chukuruso, a chitu la jing la jing a chibuwa nangwan. That's not what we mean. A chene ye ki yuko arbuluil. But there are characteristics that explain 2019 for us. Leki na nong kawin alipen kutier kudongwan yuiru nangwo. Why this early writings quote is so good? Yung yene ega ra tuenga lenwa kini yene tia. As she describes October 22. She lines it up with the cross. And then she speaks about the two groups formed there. At this way, Ma, is there two groups? Two groups at the close of probation, Daniel 12.1. Righteous will stay righteous, wicked will stay wicked. How did those two groups form? They received the seal of God or the mark of the beast. So how many choices did they have? Two. Two messages. Two messages are given in this Sunday law history. The righteous will choose one and the wicked will choose another. And then there's a shut door here where neither are going to change. Does that all make sense? We all believe that. Does anyone not believe that? Righteous and wicked, two groups. Divided by two messages. Good. Just so you know, if anyone here is tempted to join FFA side, you just signed up to believe two streams of information. The message they left over. Uh, Just so you know. Two streams of information divide the wicked and the righteous. We come back into Millerite history. Two messages, two streams of information. What were they? Millerite. Millerite. Christ is coming back. We know the mistake. October twenty-two. And Protestants. Protestant. Who believe in the Millennium Doctrine. Two doctrines, two messages. Divided two groups of people. October 22, 1844. Uh, served as a dividing line. Between the two groups. Jesus moved from the holy place to the most holy place. And all who had rejected the message of that movement, they knelt in prayer. And in early writings, who does she say they're now praying to? Like the Jews who offered useless sacrifices, the Protestants offered up useless prayers to the apartment Jesus had left, the holy place. Satan fills that void. 
Can Christ hear their prayers? No. Who receives them? Satan. Now I'm not saying that some Protestant on the other side of the world who never heard that message suddenly went through that experience. But as a movement, you know the danger of rejecting that message when they knew it and rejected when they knew it and rejected it. What became October 22 was a shut door. Shut door between the holy place and the most holy place. For those who refused to go in. And it may seem like a minor thing to not have seen that change. But the prophetic message was a life and death message. If God won't hear your prayers, he can't help you. If God can't hear your prayers, he won't help you. So we don't teach that there is no intercession after 2019. If that was the case, if after the cross, when Peter asks for forgiveness, for being rude to Gentiles, could he receive any? Do we honestly believe that Ellen White never needed an intercessor after October 22? FFA believed that this was a moral close of probation. Where Jesus ceased intercession. It's an inconsistent use of our reform lines. And a rejection of the light of Moses, Christ, and Millerites. So the template line, the 144,000. Uh, from that we create a fractal. These waymarks become take on the characteristics of the other waymarks. We can take all of the symbology of the second advent. But not every characteristic. We saw the separation of two groups in the shut door. But not every characteristic that remains special for this reform line. We don't believe that there's going to be a rapture of priests here. Rapture. 
You understand the Protestant rapture. Kafai was going to be consistent, they need to start teaching that. And we don't believe that Christ leaves the hot, most holy place here for everyone. But it's very clear that those who find them on the wrong side of that door have gone into great delusion and darkness of which I suggest Many cannot come out of. They genuinely know what they've rejected. Rejected, they cannot come out of that darkness. So an intercessor becomes pointless anyway. If they're praying to Satan, he can't hear their prayers. To learn a non Satan. So this is a shut door. It takes all that characteristics except for no intercession. A few people have asked about the Sunday law. A few people have asked about the Sunday law. Isn't, it isn't the purpose of these studies to go into 2014 and 2019 and dig out the Sunday law. We've discussed its nature in quite a few previous presentations. In different places. And I don't want to do that now. It will distract from our study. But at a later point when we discuss this way, Mark, we may be able to tie that in. What I want us to see is that we must put our faith in the lions. Without me explaining what it is, we can, but without it, can you put your faith in it as a Sunday law? We'll not have every characteristic of this way, Mark. But this is still a close of probation. A sharp door. This is still a Sunday law. This is still a Sunday law. This is a Sunday law. We have to put our faith in what the lines tell us even if we can't see it. We all know the church and state has come together in America. That's clear. So you know something has happened. Someone asked about the work of the 144,000 after the second advent. What is the work of the 144,000? Question. 
What is the work of the priests of the Panium? They're going to be teachers. So after Panium, the priests go to work as teachers. So after the second advent, we'll all get to heaven. Someone's going to say to Abraham, change that. Someone's going to go to Moses, say, let me introduce you to some priests. Who's it going to take them to? It's going to take them to my sisters. Uh, so, and Moses is going to say, thought I wrote that can't happen. What happened? And he has to sit at the feet of my sister. She's going to teach Moses about equality. Because he's back here. He doesn't understand this history. All this, all this. We all know Moses does. I use him as a symbol. He got a vision of a lot. He had a vision of a lot. But that he symbolizes a whole subgroup of people. The entire Jewish nation. You never knew about equality. Someone is going to have to teach Luther about, about why we're keeping the seventh day Sabbath in heaven. They'll have to sit down with Luther and lay it out. Seventh day is the Sabbath. That, that will take him by surprise. For many of these people, for all of these people, they're going to need educating. And those are the people who know the most. There will be people there There will be people there who have not known of Jesus. They'll get to heaven and they'll look at their plate of food and say, where's my meat? Where's my drums? Ah, uh, yeah. What are these strange clothes and where am I? And who's the only people qualified to teach them? Those who have all the light. If Luther went to teach them, he can give them so much. He can give them so much. Then he's going to start teaching them error. Then Teaching error. Then And then we'd have to fix up the messy mates. Then it ends up. So the priests work as teachers. What are the 144,000 going to do? 
Kayong bi ko ay kapi jala lo ya kerjen ye tu ban. Praise the teachers, hundred and forty-four thousand are teachers. So londena tung ko ay ka dupi, ko ay ka dupi. That's why they're required to know so much. Yen ka yen ka ko arbi na ka juy bi banyi. Wanna come back to our? Tle wa du chen ka ko arbu bu luel. Everyone here bought into two streams of information. You could all see it here. Two classes. Two messages. One asks you to be sealed, one asks you to receive a mark. What was taught that split this movement? Was just the request. Aye. Aye, feedback. Be consistent. Be jam. Kakor bacaat ke intung. There's two streams of information in the history of our plowing. Ah, a few, few. Aw, a few. You know, kena go to a goji. They have to either receive Elder Jeff. And his time of year magazine. Or what do they receive? What do they receive? The traditional beliefs of the Adventist institution. Go back to the time of the Millerites. In Miller Act. 1798 to 1840. Except William Miller and his unsealing of Daniel. Uh, William Miller Or the traditional view of the Protestant institutions. Long dated the the Protestant. There's two messages, two streams, two choices. In this dispensation, it was the same. Ah, kuna daman kine where kine chirad ban loy daman kine kitung benang loy ni togayro. Either receive the message of time. Ela ba, eda ba huge daman baga. Take the quotes. Well, kanong kapukwe. And take that traditional view. Kujala adapted when Chokaya when she quite tall. We come to the history of our latter reign. Najalu Bena Gukul Dan and then Deng 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 Twing. And we find the same thing. We either take the message of equality. Huge Tung and Oma Yuko. Or we take the tradition, traditional view of the Adventist institution. Hello, you know what? You have huge thumb and no man of bullum. I have huge, uh, she's seven days to talk and a gay and a magic. A later seeing Adventist will take a quote that says, You shall start no new organization. Uh, run aloud this year, seven day Adventist, a little bit, but get a lump of queen, could we look at you now? And attack Elder Jeff. And a later seen Adventist. Take all the quotes saying you don't time set. And attack Elder Pamenda. And a later, ad, ad, later seen Adventist will take all the quotes. About equality, inequality. Oh, Laodicean Seventh Day Adventists are be are be kagarge kijam long tum nom ukaja achi nim tum abi lom. And attack the midnight cry message. Kujel ke a few day the weary kujel ke kien butarpen. And now the Jeff said. Wa yel the Jeff wa yel yel. Prior to November nine. Ah, warangoten pe 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 pe. 
Going back to my later scene methodology. Uh, and And he became one of those later scene Adventists. Doesn't believe in dispensationalism. Again, inconsistent. Because he would be forced to say, No time setting was dispensational. And in our dispensation, the instructions are different. So he does believe in dispensationalism. When it suits him. When it suits him. When it favors him. When it favors him. Okay. Elder Jeff does believe in dispensationalism. When it works to his advantage. Uh, agrees with his ideas. So there's a panium, but there's no raffia. If that sounds crazy, it is. It's equally crazy to reject dispensationalism when it comes to equality. And continue to time set because it's dispensational. Continue to time set because it's dispensational. From the very beginning, there's always two streams of information. Two choices. Christ and Satan. Eat the fruit, don't eat the fruit. Cain and Abel. Uh, worship this way or worship that way. If you reject the light God gives, you always have an alternative. The problem that faced this movement was not when we said there's two streams of information in this history of the priests or in our plowing is when we decided to be consistent and if we said there's a true stream that plows us then for the world, in their plowing, they must also have the giving of a message, an increase of knowledge, formalization, and a test. You can't be tested unless you're given a true message. And it's not a test unless you have more than one choice. You know those tests where they ask you a question and then it's multiple choice. They'll give you choices as to the answer. If they only gave you the true answer to choose, it's not a test. Uh, 
Cái chân cuộc chỉ kê bê cá bín cá loài chân cái kinh cái này chê chọn tâm So there must be truth and there must be error Right answers, wrong answers So cú cá kê cá yên cá loài chân ai chê ai yết cá dê Ê la dê mà nắng rực cú nàng yê And the minute we did this for the world The moment we did this for the world Cú lô nhé nó wó cá kê nó lôi trên nó bình nông October 2018 This movement began to split. Because there are implications that were hard to accept. There must be a messenger. He's going to take a true message and give it to the world. There must also be an alternative. So when we look at the plowing history of the world, all we're saying is we were plowed by a messenger and a true message, so must they. For foundational reason that this movement split. Everything else ties into that one point. Consistency. Because then you have to see the two sides. And the implications are without going to the messages, just focus on the election. Clinton good, Trump bad. Obama good, Trump bad. And then everyone with racism or sexism starts to stumble. Everyone with those Conservative evangelical belief systems. This split started long before September. September 2019. It started in October 2018. When this was presented and immediately rejected by Elder Jeff. He seems to have passed because he accepted November 9. Okay. But November 9 was not the test. The implications of this are that there are two external messages. The midnight cry was presented in September and October of 2018. September, October 2018. The same points in time. There were two messages that went to the world. Two formalized messages showed the opposite sides that America had been dragged into. 
nyoban karo cene pana mereka kelotin I want to quote from the Guardian. Aye, lele encore anong gar kar balu menong ran toke ran eti. It's a Guardian article. I'll write them here. Lele ke gar koi wento ke koi duti dau koi wni ti. And it's titled. No making kinna. The Trump prophecy. Ah, uh, Elon will you get jam along with Trump to to Ben Trump to Ben Lloydin? It's going to tell this story. Will I go cool kinna a bit real? Of Donald Trump as the chosen one. Ah, I go cool a Donald Trump a bit a bit year mana like a Donald Trump you know get a lot. It's a a Guardian an article by the Guardian. Ah, uh, Igar. And it's telling us the story of this new movie documentary released in America. Uh, I, I knew the war. Uh, More than a thousand U.S. cinemas started to screen this movie. Uh, the story it tells is that there was a man in America back in 2011. He was a firefighter. Fort Fires. Fort Fires. Firefighter. Huh? Okay. Here I'm when the pure made name in me like you don't know then can look for the pure boy when you are quite the fire burger. There was a fire one day. You will go on my nature a little cool too. In a house that made drugs. What? In a house that made drugs. A drug house. Okay. When it was in a chimatic dome. And he went into that house. Would you allow him? And pulled out a young child. Man, the day to a baby. And the child was dead. And he's traumatized. He suffers for years from that memory. It says that soon after that incident, he was watching television. And Donald Trump came on the television. And he heard a voice from God. The voice was saying, you're watching the next president of the United States. That was in 2011. So in 2012, Obama is re-elected. And he is really disappointed. But as it gets to 2015, and Donald Trump announces his campaign. This man gets excited. He and his wife take these prophecies. To another couple, all strong Protestants. And they become this movement throughout America. Saying that God has ordained Donald Trump to be president. 
This occurs throughout 2016. So in 2016, there's this Protestant movement. In October 2018, it has been made into a movie and released. It's the Trump prophecy. It was in U.S. cinemas on two dates. October, October 2 and October 4. When did the midnight cry enter the United States? October 3. It was booked in in America. October 3. It was bookended by this false message. It was in India. It was in India. And not just, not just this group, but across America. Protestants start to believe that Donald Trump is a subject of prophecy. Designed by God to restore America and bring revival. That Trump as president is the will of God. He's an instrument of God. And God raised him up just for this time. It's a whole movement. And this movie was created by Jerry Falwell Jr. And Liberty University. Uh, Liberty University. If you're familiar with the history of that family and university. Because we can tie them back to 144,000 lines. Jerry Falwell, the father. Jerry Falwell, believed in restoring America's moral values. Created the moral majority movement. Introduced Protestantism to politics. Was able to get Ronald Reagan elected. Got Ronald Reagan elected. The father was behind Reagan and Bush. The president that began our reform line. Created an apostate Protestant movement. And the father did this, the son did the same. If you haven't watched those studies, we can place a lot of detail into this. Uh, a video if you can get them back away and a non com a non cover of the air, they can get it. You could go into a great deal of detail to explain it. They really in the balloting a non a non cutty a non cutty the back of you. But just recognize this link Jerry Falwell to Reagan and Bush. Uh, you can get a liberty, uh, Jerry Falwell, Jerry Reagan, Bush, and Jerry Falwell Jr. to Donald Trump. 
Jero alfawa de ra ra wune wen kene ukichira loi enong wende kene Trump. The father did all of this work. Alwel ba ba de yen kacha kuti yen kachi ben loi lonjegon. As a result of fighting against the civil rights movement. Ah, uh, ebonial feyetong chirod ben loi ah uh, ejam engek anong yide. Which taught equality. The son has done all of his work with his evangelical friends as a fight against a very similar movement that was happening under the first black president. They were introducing equality. Separating church from state. These people like Jerry Falwell, the work they're doing. Well, we can place them on a fractal. You can tie them back to the time at the end on the line of 144,000. Because they're relevant for this whole reform line, not just a fractal level. They're relevant for the priests. Not just for the world. Does that make sense? Otherwise, otherwise they would just be here. But they're relevant for us to understand. So in September and October there is this movement. Saying that of God. And there's another movement. Who's that? 2014, there's a crisis. In Flint, Michigan. In Michigan. It's this town in the United States. If uh, it gets into trouble, because many people have had their, their, their water manipulated, there's been a crisis. The water that goes to the population, the water that goes to the population has become contaminated by lead. It creates a crisis in that town. 2016, Donald Trump is elected. Both of these things become the subject of a documentary. Known as Fahrenheit 11.9. Okay. Eken kene kachi ke jalb god ki kadiya aake jalb god ni mala. Fahrenheit 11.9 is released. Uh, and screens through late September uh, through early October. 11, 9. So, the midnight prime message began late September with the message of Fatima. The children were a girl, the one the Fatima. It finished early October with the message of the counterfeit. This history tested three groups. 
It was the laterite of the brace. எனக்கு ஏ டென்ஹியன்ட் நாங்க பைண்ட் இருக்காக நிறை. The early right of the Levites. எனக்கு ஏ டென்ஹியன்ட் நாங்க எனக்கு ஏ டென்ஹியன்ட் நாங்க மிக்க லேபி. In the plowing of the world. எனக்கு ஏ ஜுயர் பின்னமே. At the same time we were saving the midnight cry message. இது தாங்கட்டும் கண்ணு எனக்கு ஏ லோகு வாக்கியு இது வேறு. The world had their message formalized. Ah. Uh, Both streams of information. A few took a draw. Late September, early October. Ah, uh, a pay the one go for the two. The midnight cry message. A few you told the wary. Late September, early October. Ah, uh, a pay the one two for the girl go pay here. You have two completely opposite views of Donald Trump. One says he's Hitler, one says he's Cyrus. Only one of those agrees with the midnight cry message and prophecy. So you know which side was correct. And for that, Elder Jeff and his followers left the movement. But he cannot identify what, what cloud the world. Which is why they attack us so much. In the absence of any reasonable message. Then eh elew de puj when yene ye puj toke ye ye. It's all they have left to say. It's all they can say. Yen ke ke lew bi lew. We want to concentrate more on the plowing of the world. We'll finish that when we come back. Well, can can I? Can you with me? Abu Jabu told the word to kill them. Be Father in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for how clearly. These subjects can be laid out in prophecy. I pray, Lord, that we'll be anchored in these lines. We know many people across the world are shaken. They are unsure of what to know and what to believe. I pray, Lord, that they'll see the, the weight of evidence that you have placed before us. Father, you do not give us all information. We must accept without all. You leave room for doubt. But I pray, Lord, we will see your mercy in how much you have given. I pray, Lord, that we will... Be prepared to do the work that you have before us. In only a short period of time, Lord, we must begin that. We know that we have much to learn and much to practice. I pray that you will help us towards that end to be ready. In Jesus' name, amen.